Hey. In today's video, guys, I'm gonna warm up my hands first. Today's video, I'm gonna be trying out the instant locks on either one or a couple of my dreadlocks, and then probably if I like it, well, 100% if I like it, I will continue to do the instant locks on my hair. I'm excited. All right, guys, at first glance, you can already tell that like my hair is just like really matted. And the reason being is because I didn't get my hair wet this morning. I'm actually going to shower after I do some instant locks. And I do want to do that in today's video just to show you guys that after you do the instant locks, they're in there and you can wash your hair and you're good to go. Of course, there might be some unraveling because they're not 100% mature, but you can get them to a mature point to where you can wash them and not feel like they're gonna unravel or you have to be very careful. You can literally just get in there and wash the hair really good. And yeah, I'll just be able to show you that in today's video. I first wanna show you what I'm gonna be using to do the instant locks. So in order to do the instant locks, I'm gonna be using the Great Locks crochet hook. It's the packaging it comes in. You guys can pick one of these up as well. So if you guys want instant dreadlocks like I'm gonna show you in today's video, make sure to pick yourself up a Great Locks crochet hook. It's very strong has a bamboo handle on it. And these are way easier to use than ones that don't have a handle on them just because without the handle, it makes it hard to actually, you know, get in there and get a good instant lock. So you can see what size I'm using. I'm using a 0.5. You can use a 0.75, it's really up to you. I prefer the smaller one just cause I can really get in there and make it even more tight. With a bigger hook, it does make it a little bit harder. I'm gonna show you really quick a close up of how I'm actually gonna be using it. Essentially, I just grab the dreadlock in between these fingers right here. And then with the dreadlock coming through, with the tip coming into the inside of my hand, I essentially wanna go in with the hook facing towards my thumb. And I go in and then I pull against my thumb and it constantly allows traction and tension on that hair to pull it all together. And I'm, see as I'm going, my scalp is fa on this side and the tip of the dreadlock is over here. So I'm always pulling towards the scalp. And obviously if you wanna learn more in depth, you can also join the Great Locks Masterclass. And when you join the Great Locks Masterclass, you get not only the crochet hook for free, but you also get the interlocking tool for free. It's called the locking bundle. And if you just wanna take the courses, make sure to join the dreadlock school because that is a lower price and I'll teach you personally how to get dreadlocks. Now before I get into it, there's one obvious thing that I have to do before actually starting with the instant locks and right off the bat, you guys can tell, I need to go in and actually kind of separate the hair, which every morning I typically get my hair wet or even wash it just so that it stays clean and dry because fun fact, if your hair is clean and dry, it locks up the best and it locks up a whole lot faster and a whole lot easier as long as you don't have you know too much product in it. Me personally, I don't like to use product at all, but if it's necessary, then I will use it. Next say you're twisting with gel. I like to use a very little amount, but sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes you can avoid it. And to be honest, you can avoid it in general overall. If you use dreadlock tools versus dreadlock products, like say for instance, today I'm using the crochet hook and this is a tool that you don't need any product. You can just use a tool and you can lock up your hair instantly. But like I said about showering every day, it allows the hair to actually kind of separate a bit and then some actually combined. So I'm gonna try to stay away from the ones that have combined. Like this one combined, so it's really thick. I'm not sure if I wanna keep that. There's some back here that are just really thick. And to be honest, like the ones that are thickening up are the ones that are actually locking up. There's some that are actually budding up in the back, which is really good. And there's only one that I know of that I know combined with one next to it. And it is this one right here. It combined with one of the front dreadlocks just because the front ones are really thin. I might be okay with that. But yeah, so essentially what I'm gonna do is to separate it, I'm just gonna do a light dry retwist. No water, no nothing. And this is what I do typically anytime I go out. Like if I'm at home, I'm okay with my hair being frizzy and kind of like messed up, if I could put it that way. And that's just one thing you have to understand with getting dreadlocks is there's gonna be times what I call the locking process. Many people call it the ugly stage to where your hair is just not gonna look the way that you want it to. So this is what I do on a daily basis from going out. I wear hats a lot. It's not only just to cover it up. What happens when you wear a hat, it kind of disturbs the hair and puts it in a different form and allows it to actually start to lock up. So the more you actually do to your hair, the faster it will actually lock up. And I, I put it this way, the more you can do with your hair in a way that you're not really thinking about it, like putting on a hat. I'm not thinking about my, my dreadlocks at that time of me putting on the hat and wearing the hat. So I'm not actually focused on actually maintaining them, but something like that versus like twisting your hair or trying to crochet hook it every single day. Like if you put a hat on every single day, multiple times throughout the day, it's like putting your hair in different forms. One thing that's kind of tough with these 
<clears throat> me personally with the dreadlocks that are right above my ear is when I put my glasses on, my glasses go straight through the dreadlock. So it's just like a constant effort to keep those dreadlocks together. But as you can tell with all this frizz going on, that's actually benefiting the dreadlock or the locking process so much. So if your hair is getting frizzy, allow it to get frizzy because when it gets frizzy and then you like compress them like by sleeping and or if you put a do-rag on, then it benefits so much because that frizz will allow it to actually start locking up with the other hair because frizz is necessary. And a lot of people try to eliminate frizz. And the thing about frizz with dreadlocks, if you allow it to eliminate itself, it actually maintains a whole lot better. But I am gonna try to get to every single dreadlock right now and make sure that it's good to go. And then I'll go into picking out which locks I wanna do to instantly lock them up. I'm most likely not gonna do any on the back just because those ones are already budding up. But some of these ones on the top that take forever to butt up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to handle some of those. already tell right off the bat that I've already handled sectioning them out a whole lot better and if you see this before and after picture you guys can see how much of a difference this has made to like the way that it actually looks and it just appears a whole lot better I can go out in public like this and I feel comfortable I feel okay and that's just one thing that you have to learn you have to figure out ways around you know just being comfortable in your own hair or the way uh, that your hair looks and, and so on and so forth but guys it is now time for the instant locking process Oh yeah. Okay, so let me figure out which one I wanna do. I'll probably do this one right here, like a couple in the front, just so I have them. Like this one, it's really thick actually. Which thicker ones are actually easier to instantly lock. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna do this one. Let's just start with this one and then I'll go from there. See what it looks like, cause I don't want it to stand up too much, especially cause I'm only doing a couple right now. But if I were to do a lot, then I wouldn't mind if they're all standing up. All I would do is not go all the way down to the root and then that would prevent it from, you know, just looking kind of weird. If you're not sure if you want your dreadlocks to stand up, then, then don't go all the way down to the root because that allows it some wiggle room to lay down and so on and so forth. But taking it, like I said earlier, putting it between these three fingers like that. And then the tip is gonna be hanging out right here in the middle of my hand. But all I wanna do is make sure that it's nice and tight. Like you wanna twist it so that it goes down to the root. Like I said, hold it like that, and then you want to go in and out, going in like this. Like, if I can show it to you correctly, like that. And obviously, like I said, if you want more in-depth, I teach it in the Great Locks Masterclass. But I'm going to get the initial lock, which is closer down to the root. Take a little bit of time. Don't go too fast in the beginning. But all I'm doing right now is just trying to initially lock it up. And you'll just want to go in and then rotate. And you should be able to feel the hair moving into position but you can hang out there for a little bit to get some hair movement but you always want to rotate you always want to rotate whichever way your dreadlocks are originally twisted but you notice how i'm not pulling away from the scalp so i pull away then it's just gonna just hurt the scalp you can pull sideways especially if your hair is a little short but don't ever pull away from the scalp because then you're gonna pull hair out of your actual scalp and once you got that initial lock, which I already do, let's see if you can see it. See that initial lock right there? It's kind of like a little ball. Then you can just work down from there. And my hair right now is like, I would say close to four inches, if that. But like right now, it's like locking up really quickly. So I'm going to take my time. You don't want to hang out in one area for a really long time because then you're going to have a lot of shrinkage. But if you, you know, hit the area, get the initial lock, and then just keep moving down, that's how you're going to get the best results. Because if you're experiencing too much of the hair shrinking, it's because you're pulling it into just one single lock. So once you get that initial lock, then move down. Because then you don't want it to get too tight either to where you can't fit the crochet hook back in. Because if it gets too tight, then it's like the only thing you can do at that point is external maintenance to where it's like you're doing palm rolling or twisting with gel versus actually going in and maintaining all the little hairs. So you want to leave a little bit of wiggle room. But that's what that's looking like. I think that was pretty quick. This is all initially locked, so... I mean, it just shows my hair length as well. That's that right there. I'm gonna go in a little bit more to make it tighter. So now, since I just did initial locking, I can go back in and make it tighter without the crochet hook getting stuck in the side of the dreadlock, which it's kind of impossible for it to get completely stuck because you can always pull it back through, but to where it just becomes hard to actually maintain the hair, you don't want that to happen. But you can do a little bit more detailed work since it's already initial locked. 
Detailed work, you can go a little bit slower and you're just working on little hairs outside of the dreadlock. And with the tip, I always just go directly towards the tip with the tip of the crochet hook and pull back towards the root. That allows it to lock up perfectly. So guys, there you have it right there. I don't want to get it, well, I'll go ahead and get it 100% mature so that you guys can see that I can do that. It's a little fluffy on the edge. You can see how it's a little fluffy, but to be honest, like in a week that'll go away. I'll go ahead and tackle that for you guys so you can see how that looks. But now that it's initially locked, I'm just going back and forth, make sure that I get every side pulled in. And I feel like my hair right now, the, like, the length is perfect for doing instant locks. And I think it's perfect as long as you don't go all the way down to the root. Because if you go down all the way down the root, your gel locks are going to stand up pretty good. And for me, I don't want them to stand up too much. Like I'm okay with the standing up, standing up but not a whole lot. But yeah, that's probably as far as I want to go. But you can see this ain't going nowhere. It's initially locked and it's ready to go. And like it kind of forms down a little bit. You see what I'm saying? Like I could push it down and it'll go down because I didn't go all the way down to the root. But now I can just like retwist it like this in the morning if I want to. And really that's that. It really shows my length, I can tell you that. Because everything else is really compressed. All right, let's do a skinnier one. Skinny ones can be a little bit more tough just because there's not that much hair to work with, but I'll just run through it and see how it goes. <laughs> that guys another one it was actually really easy to do the skinny one I pulled this hair out of it because I didn't want it to go in that lock I think it would have just messed up I think I need to put it in another one that's one thing as well you just want to make sure that your sections are perfectly how you want them to be before you actually start doing the instant locking method because what the way you put it that's how it's most likely gonna be and that's why it's really smart to kind of stick with the initial locks, which isn't full maturity, but leaves them to where you can wash them and, you know, still go through the locking process. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then we'll see how it looks. And then I'll do some close ups so you guys can see what's going on. And then we'll just talk about how easy it is to actually get instant locks using the Great Locks Crochet Hook. You can tell the difference, like look at this, very stretchy. You still see like how bright it is. And this one is just like, obviously you can still see the brightness, but it's not as cylindrical because it's instant locks. Well, as cylindrical, I meant like spiral. It's not a spiral anymore. It's like mature dreadlock. I will work on the tips a little bit more, but then again, I still want them to kind of form on their own to their full maturity without using the interlock or the crochet hook. But that's the one I just did, a little bit longer than the rest just because it's further back on the head. This one's on the, f the actual hairline, so that's why it's a little bit shorter. This one's a little bit further back too, so it's about the same length as this one. Let me go ahead and touch up the tips a little bit because they are kind of loose. I also did want to mention why it's important to get that initial lock down at the base and not like at the root. I'm talking about just at the base of the dreadlock, wherever you want it to start so that it can hang a little bit. The importance of getting that initial lock at the bottom is so that if you do end up pulling away from the scalp, you're not pulling from the actual scalp, you're pulling from that initial lock, which is okay, because then you're pulling that lock forward, and then you're also pulling the tip backward to lock it all together. Because that's essentially the locking process, even outside of using the crochet hook. The locking process consists of your roots locking up with the progression of your tips locking up and meeting in the middle. So if you're one of those people that it's like, man, my roots are really locked up and my tips are, aren't, it's normal. And at the same time, if you're one of those people that have the tips locked up, but the roots won't, it's completely normal. It just takes time. Now, obviously with the crochet hook, you can go in and maintain it to actually lock up. And the good thing about the crochet hook is that it works for any hair type. Straight hair, curly hair, very tight curls, doesn't matter. Works for every hair type and it's very easy to use. And that's as much as I wanna do today. And if I do wanna continue this process, I'm gonna make it a like kind of a series, but I definitely wanna hear from you guys down below if you want me to actually continue with the instant locks or just get the, you know, the OG, just twisting the gel locks. It's taking a little bit of time, but like I said, there's some in the back that are initially locking up, which is really good. Like these back here, where I lay on my head. Those ones are already starting to initially lock. Not sure if you guys can see that. So. 
the locking is taking place, which is really good, and I'm excited about that. But obviously, instant locks happens a lot quicker. I'd be able to start to mature them up faster. And also, I'd be able to show you guys personally just the process step by step um, through a series of videos of me actually getting the locks. And it would just be a little bit quicker of me getting locks versus you seeing me just giving you updates like, all right, this one's initially starting to lock up, and so on and so forth. But yeah, let me know. I definitely would want to do these ones around my ear just because when I put my glasses on, they go straight through it. So it'd just be nice to have that to where my glasses don't go through anymore. But comment down below if you want me to make this into a series of me just instantly locking up my hair and then we'll be able to see that process and then we'll be able to move on and move on to other things. But guys, what do you think? You can obviously tell the difference. These are 100% locked. Like no matter which way I twist them, they're, they're in there. Thinking about these, if I unravel it, you can see it already unraveling. I mean, they're doing, they're doing good at actually staying in their sections, but there is a faster way. And like I said, if you guys do want the crochet hook, make sure to go to greatlocks.com and pick yourself up the Great Locks crochet hook. Or if you want the bundle to where you would interlock the hair after doing the crochet hook, then get the bundle. And say you want to get it free, then join the Great Locks Masterclass. But yeah, guys, that's today's video. Hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And please comment down below what you want to see. Like, if you want to see that series, make sure to comment down below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys do have an amazing day. Matter of fact, have a great day. Peace and God bless.